Hey guys, it is Patrick. And before you dive into this lesson, I wanted you to know that you're about to start a new section of principles of accounting. And you can actually head to my website at www.patrickleemsa.com where you can actually purchase and then download and then print the worksheets that go along with this lesson and all of the lessons that are connected to this section of principles of accounting. It's a great way to take notes so that you can actually concentrate on what I'm teaching you in our lessons and then you can able to write notes along with the notes that I am showing on your screen. So all you have to do is head to my website at www.patrickleemsa.com. There you can purchase them and then download them and then you can use them on this and all of the lessons that are connected to this section. So go ahead and do that and if you are ready let's head into our first lesson in this section right now. Hey guys, welcome to section eight. In section eight, we're going to be taking a look at receivables, specifically notes receivables and accounts receivables. And we're going to look at the intricacies of receivables as well as how do we account for them in our books. Now in this lesson specifically, we are going to take a look at extending credit. What does that look like? What are some, why do we do that as well as, you know, what are issues with that extension of credit. So let's get started by just giving you an overview of receivables. So receivables in business to business commerce or B2B um, kind of are the norm when it comes to transactions between those two parties. So it's always been like this. Now, this is not to say that we extend credit to any business. We actually have to do some due diligence around it to make sure that they could pay us back. But once we do that credit check and that due diligence, then we can just sell goods to a vendor vendor or sell goods to a credit uh, customer on an account basis. So they don't need to pay us when we deliver it. We'll give them a bill and then they have X amount of days from that bill to pay us. So we do do our due diligence when we do this. We don't just give credit to anybody, but that's kind of the norm of how businesses have transacted with each other. Now, there are specific reasons why, and I'm going to give you two specific reasons why extending credit is a thing in business to business commerce. So one of the first reasons is that it actually provides a direct increase in revenue sales without the customer actually having to come up with the cash. And so what happens in businesses is because everybody's floating cash, by providing credit, you're gonna actually boost up your sales because your customer doesn't have to wait to have all of their cash to buy more product from you. They can just buy more product from you, take that product in and then sell it. And before the due date, hopefully they're selling enough to pay your bills back. But by extending credit, you get the sale now, not later. If you think of consumer sales, the reason why credit is important to uh, businesses is that it makes that customer buy that product now, especially expensive product, buy it now rather than waiting later. By buying it now, that increases our revenues now, which hopefully increases our profit now um, so that we can show better uh, numbers on our financial statement. So that's one of the reasons of extending credit. Now, the other reason kind of goes back to what I just talked about at the very beginning was that it's kind of the norm. So if a, if a competitor offers credit, whether formal or informal, and you don't, your customers are going to go to your competitor. And again, assuming all else is the same, same type of customer service, same level of workmanship, same level of professionalism, assuming everything else is the same, your customers are going to go to your competitors because they're going to get 30 days to pay. They don't have to float the cash because the vendor is floating the cash for them. Now, obviously, all of this creates some issues. The first issue that we need to talk about is that the cash flow cycle actually becomes longer if we do this. Now, in sections six and seven, we talked about inventory and we said that, you know, when you buy inventory, your cash basically is stuck. Your cash is sitting on the shelf. So until you sell the product, your cash, you can't, you don't have any cash. Okay. Okay. So it hinders our ability here to be able to invest in our businesses and, um, buy more inventory because we've tied up cash in our receivables. We've tied it up in that we can't get that cash until our customer pays us. Just like we tie up cash in inventory when, inventory is purchased with cash and then it just sits on our shelf and we haven't liquidated that inventory, which means the cash 
hasn't been given to us. So we've got this tie up of cash, which makes the operating cycle or the cash cycle longer. And that can be a problem for businesses. Another issue with extending credit is bad debt expense can occur. And usually it will occur in some way, shape or form. A customer won't pay us. And because of that, we don't have the capital that we can use to invest in ourselves and buy more product. Now, again, like I said before, we usually vet our customers who are extending credit. So this is not like we're extending credit to everybody because if we knew that they wouldn't pay us back, we wouldn't have sell, sold them anything on credit. We would have asked for cash payment up front. But bad debt happens and sometimes it happens to the best of companies that you think are your best customers. So that is a issue and that hits the bottom line very hard. So that's an issue of extending credit. Now the last issue is just the increase the cost of providing credit. So when we look look at what costs are incurred for extending credit to our customers, we have uh, issues with, or we have costs associated with extending the credit. We have costs associated with collecting the cash. We have costs associated with collecting default accounts, accounts that haven't been paid yet. Those are issues that come up. And because of that, we have to, ex we have these expenses that we're going to have to incur in order just to collect our cash. If we collected cash on day one, we wouldn't have these issues and we wouldn't have to have people on hand to deal with those issues, which would increase our costs. So it's important that, to know that if we're extending credit, it's going to cost us some money, whether the time it takes to extend the credit or to find out if they can uh, pay us back in the future collection of cash. When the cash comes in, we're going to have to put it in their account. We have to deposit the cash. So it becomes this odd cycle here. So we have expense associated with that. And then lastly, we're, we're, we're going to have to collect. And if we're going to have to collect, that means time that we're going to have to spend on the phone, time sending letters, time contracting um, debt services to another company to try to collect for us. So there's just a lot of cost associated with issuing credit. But some could say that the advantages of issuing credit um, are greater than the cost of providing that credit to our customers. And so that's one thing that we have to weigh. So that's a look at extending credit. I know that we're kind of just understanding the basics here. We're looking at the advantages and the disadvantages, but it's important to know that this is commonplace for business to business commerce. So hope you enjoyed this lesson and we'll see you in the next video. Hey guys, if you like this video, make sure you press the like button below. And if you're looking for worksheets that go along with all of these lessons, head over to my website at patrickleemsa.com or click in the link in the far right. And I've got your next lesson right over here. So just click that link and it'll take you to that video. So until then, we'll see you in the next lesson.